Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing on this uh, September 13th, Friday the 13th morning? And uh, got a show not planned out totally for you, but uh, just uh, wanting to get back to the basics of stuff. Uh, welcome to all you people that are interested in rediscovering the lost technologies and pioneering to build your own and useful uh, works and statements of your art. Uh, this uh, uh, exploratory adventures, the, the, the door of discovery is opening up. So the old stuff becoming new and uh, um, just getting through. Hats off to all the people that are currently delving into these uh, uh, facts, uh, getting the fiction away from the, the art, but even fiction can be something you believe in because, uh, things that I was once told was fiction are becoming a reality. So lots of fun ahead. It's like I always say, if you're, it, it, hope you're having fun because we are, uh, having fun. Uh, this is kind of the, uh, Prelude. I plan on going about nine on about nine thirty this morning, and so I'm coming on just a little bit early before I get into my show. And hopefully, as more and more people find out about what I'm doing and become interested, uh, we can get feedback. Um, just me talking to a screen. I know there's somebody out there that's going to be watching this. Uh, however, in the teaching environments that I always taught in, uh, I call it adult education. And the thing with adults is that. Uh, the questions that they have uh, at the time are the best things to teach that syllabus from. And the uh, my whole philosophy has always been just like a kid in school. Well, the reason a lot of kids aren't interested in all this stuff is because uh, they're tuned in to what I call uh, what's in it for me. And if you're not reaching the what's in it for me, uh, you lose interest in a hurry. So the ones that are interested in this and trying to glean out uh, good information uh, 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 and getting better, because as we refine this, we're going to uh, start building a uh, better mousetrap. Like I said, when I, uh, when I was a kid, uh, I always dreamed of building my own electric powered aircraft. And, one of the reasons that you don't turn uh, electric powered aircraft over to a 16 year old is because the, if you have 180 power, horsepower on the ground at altitude, it's 180 horsepower where the combustion engine facilitated a safety valve in there because it topped out around 20,000 feet. Can you survive at uh, 20,000 feet without oxygen? Sure you can, but there's other things in there like epoxy and other things that can happen to you. So the electric powered airplane is not something that uh, you just go up and build and build for everybody. So you got to keep it safe and uh, keep it separated from your total audience. But just know that that's out there and possible. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay.
Well, sorry about that. Uh, you know, the, <laughs> the thing is that we got to just keep on keeping on with stuff. And this is my hobby and uh, it's not my real job. Uh, I used to think I could get my job done if it wasn't for all the interruptions. And then I found out that the interruptions was my job. So the, uh, as I post videos and stuff, I'm a busy person and have a lot of gears being shifted, a lot of irons in the fire, if you will. And, uh, uh, but I want to talk to you, uh, about what, uh, YouTube channel, Benny St. Vincent, uh, Roy has brought us some technology that I've overlooked, uh, like I said many times before, but this is the, uh, to me, it's the uh, mountain, the paramount, if you will, uh, really understanding oscillation and getting it boiled down to uh, parametric oscillation. Um, the story when I was building a lot of these motors and stuff and test beds, uh, I pulled the plug on it. This is a wall wart, one and a half amp wall wart. And, uh, in it, it created its own spark gaps and the phenomena with parametric oscillation is what I learned from this accident. I mean, something I used to keep from happening, design out of power supplies and UPS systems happened uh, uh, in this transformer set and the uh, uh, going through and understanding it uh, so I could duplicate it again because now I'm searching for that. Okay. And the, uh, um, we're, we're to building the building blocks for this and don't mean to be long winded or anything about, uh, the technology, but where the technology roots from, in my opinion, okay, is from the spark gap. And this is the only shop drawing of the buzz box generator uh, for the Model T Ford that uh, I could find and I blew it up and you can't read the legends on it because it's from a small and then uh, through it. Uh, one of the things I would appreciate if you actually do have this shop drawing, um, uh, you know, from it and the, uh, uh, I'll bring it up there really close to where you can see um, the, uh, I'd like to see the, you know, something that's a little more full, full scale that could be pointed out from that. So, um, when I work with technology, uh, I always keep me a book. This is my green book. And that's the current technologies that I'm working with. And, uh, I always use a composition notebook and with my notebook, uh, you know, this is all I know about uh, parametric oscillation, okay? And I haven't even titled it yet, but the thing is, if you'll notice, all the pages in between are blank. <laughs> kind of like all I know about fishing and everything. But uh, when I build my notebook, uh, I actually start from the back, okay? And I work forward. Uh, as I'm doing my different drawings and things, and the uh, this is about the Bedini schoolgirl motor, okay. And the things that I learned from the uh, schoolgirl motor, uh, being the um, uh, the in series batteries and the parallel batteries, the current side of the system and the voltage side of the system. And in that, we're basically building a uh, uh, transistor, a variable transistor to control oscillation, uh, a bipolar transistor, uh, a, a common to uh, uh, in transistor and diodes uh, in the system and the uh, the schoolgirl motor has 
taught us so many things. Well, from that, the spinoff of the permanent magnet motor that I built uh, was from an off-the-shelf motor that uh, had permanent magnets in it, you know, and they're north, south, north, south, north, south magnet, even though it's on the same unit in, in, for the field, okay? And now I plan to make all these north magnets uh, from what I've learned to make my asymmetrical motor even better, okay, in the coil configuration. Now, the proven coil uh, configuration that I dealt with is a 33 slot unit is wound very specifically, okay? And I will share this part of the technology with you. I wasn't planning on it, but there's been so many people come out with this very simple stuff. So uh, it deserves to be out to the uh, uh, open source world, okay? Uh, the uh, On the back side of it, it has a 66 pole commutator. And through the Bedini technology, uh, I'm going to get away from the commutators in this motor and get back to the old basic uh, spark gap uh, configuration. And the uh, my hat's off to uh, Roy uh, uh, working in this technology, and there's you know so many changes that we can make, but that's the the basics of what I learned from the schoolgirl motor. And the, a lot of you have seen this motor many times, and I did leave the uh, um, uh, variable resistor on there, but I even plan to use more on this. And the you know when the whole thing comes down to building a better mousetrap and coming up with off the shelf uh, tech, you know items uh, that people can use to configure that. And when I was playing uh, with this, I just kind of slid this up here and held it on there and I spent the wheel. And I don't know if you can see this or it'll happen again, but the material started <laughs> making his own switch. Here. All right. So there's a switch. There's an oscillating switch that's working directly off my coil. Uh, I mean, off the unit as a switch. So there's my switching system right there, and that can be incorporated to other things just off of two uh, mousetraps that are packed. So if you wondered uh, what I'm using to build my oscillator from, I'm building my oscillator uh, from a mousetrap, okay? So a little MacGyvering uh, technology to be done there. Of course, I always relate this to telling stories. A lot of you know that I work on jet skis, and um, uh, jet skis are real compact. Uh, uh, the jet ski I was going to tell this story about was a jet ski that was two-stroke, and I was test driving it. And in my test drive, I noticed it got heavier and heavier and loaded up, and I felt like, uh-oh, I'm sinking. I got a hole in the thing. Well, what had happened off the exhaust, exhaust manifold uh, going into the tuned exhaust, a common area that does rust and that you can plug back up, uh, uh, rusted out and was filling uh, water, you know, pumping water in uh, from the cooling system right into the ski and it was filling up fast. And there was a little island on the lake that I was at and I headed right for it and I'm I made it to it before it sank. <laughs> okay. And so I pulled the jet ski up on the beach and the engine was still running. I you know, didn't get water into the fuel and didn't flood it out or anything. And I started looking around for stuff that I could stop this hole on the bottom side of the tuned exhaust that was lit in this water jacket, uh, filled the jet ski with water in. So I looked around on this little beach that's on this island in the middle of this lake. And I found a, a, a rubber, uh, I call them thongs, you know, rubber shoe in a length of about number 10 gauge wire. <laughs> and I used that shoe 
to cover that hole up and tied it on there with wire was a perfect fit. No, but it, instead of pouring water into it, it was low pressure, you know, but instead of pouring water into the jet ski, it was just dripping it in. And I was able to start it up, run it, and go back about four miles, had a four, about a four mile run on this lake uh, to get back, uh, uh, put this jet ski on a trailer and take it back to the shop. So there are things that you can MacGyver just by simply looking around is the point. And so uh, I want to get into uh, the buzz box technology. This is something that, you know, we're here teaching the young and old. I mean, you know, that's the thing, the reason we watch these YouTubes is just see what other people are doing and share in our community. And uh, uh, the, the basics of where we're all coming from, what we're wanting to do, but your art form from what I'm doing um, may change into something else completely different that I hadn't even thought of. And I look forward to the people that are working with that. Jason is one of the guys that uh, he's taken the art form uh, that uh, to me, first time I saw it came from um, uh, um, Gerard Morin and the pump and the way that it oscillated just a simple uh, water pump that uh, uh, has some dimensions to it when you spin it, it it makes an rf generator and jason is working with this technology with the pancake coils and other things and finding the energy that's supposedly uh off of that and it, this this little pump is Thank, thank, thank you, Gerard, and I love you like a brother, but you're the one that I got this technology. And, of course, the other technology that uh, uh, he showed us with the uh, ECM motors and uh, um, the so many cool things in there with configurations of stuff that's out there in the field that's pretty easy to buy and you can experiment with and and find out other things about. So no matter what components or what you're looking at, but to readdress, and I'll put the link uh, to the best thing I found is concerning Eli, the Iceman, and the RLC uh, parallel and series circuits. And the, you know, the recipe is batter, okay? The next part of the rest recipe is the inductor, uh, which the inductor is uh, your coil, okay? And whether it's an open core coil or whether you put rods of ferrite material in there, uh, doing different things in different configurations with different composites, uh, they use everything from rod, BBs, uh, to work out their math and benchmarks uh, to get that done uh, to building more sophisticated uh, cores with different wiring for different uh, purposes. But the reactance to the magnetic field um, and whether it's a linear magnetic field um, uh, the, like I said, you know, this is the, the simplest thing. The reason I built this oscillator and to find out the different things in oscillation uh, was to, uh, I always felt like if I could get three and a half watts of dependable power for a very long time, then I could amplify that uh, resonance to do many more things. In other words, that's where my seed energy, uh, as far as control, uh, is designed to come from and uh, i've got a new configuration that will be forthcoming i'll be sharing with you in the future as, as soon as i get it built the i call myself a flyer okay the uh there are other people out there that uh, uh, um, uh there are other people out there that really were the most beautiful builders out there. And uh, I was a flyer, okay, with my model aircraft I'm talking about. I'm not talking about real aircraft. My model aircraft, I was a flyer. 
And the great thing is, is I love to do stunts and everything with model aircraft. You know, you, you hit the ground and big deal, you got to take it apart. And the thing was, I was always amazed how little I could make fly. And I mean, it may not control very well, but uh, broken wings and readjustments and some real quick, fast drying blues and stuff. Well, it didn't ruin my day. I just fly as little as possible as I could get up, uh, get up there. And then when I got into remote control, same thing. You know, I learned that I was a flyer. I mean, I just wanted to experience that. And so it really is amazing uh, with basic components. Uh, um, the Phoenix, if you will, uh, uh, how little it, in, with the ingredients in there that you can make fly. So you can get what I call the TLAR that looks about right. And I enjoy that part of working with different technologies because that looks about right. Yes, this is the optimum performance, uh, but it's not necessarily the only thing that'll work. And yes, there are advantages to one configuration over another configuration and it powers right on through boats and everything else. But the getting back to the basic of the inductor. Okay. Then after you got the inductor, then you go into the capacitor, whether you know little capacitor, big pasture, whatever that does, but getting to understand that you can pump voltage because in the inductor voltage leads current. Okay, then the capacitor amperage is right there. All right, and so the that's what's really neat about just that part of the RLC circuit. So in actuality, what combines those to be in phase at ninety degrees is the resistor. Okay, and so when I first saw this phenomenon, I had built this coil that you can go back in my video and see me demonstrating and the basically I didn't run it uh, 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 to do anything else but the one wire uh, in wireless that I learned off of this coil uh, was amazing so once I learned hey I can split those phases and recombine it where I want to and the amount of energy that was available from a very small power source uh, was absolutely astounding. And so what recombines those energies is resistance. Okay. And the, uh, uh, then you come up with the different configurations of the, uh, 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 this is copper rod. I showed this earlier as far as the building blocks and you go, well, man, that's just a long winded way. Of, you know, what are you talking about? parametric oscillation. Well, if you go back uh, to where I discovered the parametric oscillation actually happening in the variable transformer. Well, what's in the variable, tra variable transformer, variable uh, uh, potentiometer, uh, variable resistor? And the understanding the, uh, the the carbon and the windings and everything of how that would naturally find it and, and facilitate parametric oscillation. And what that is, is the um, return of ringing that happens within the inductor uh, to resonate that makes it ring like a louder bell uh, within the inductor itself. And that sound looks for a way out and that's where it happened to come out of just like it happened to come out here and understanding those ingredients uh, to, to propagate parametric oscillation uh, and duplicate it. Uh, that's where it's done. The great thing about the resonating spark gap is that it will pretty much facilitate that no matter what size coil that you build. So we're just now finding the materials to, uh, uh, Hey Jason. Yeah, you did make it. Uh, love your stuff. What you're doing, uh, on yours. Uh, I'm already in to the, uh, show you, uh, of what I'm talking about, but, the, uh, the, and I don't know your end goal, 
yet. Uh, I think that your end goal, Jason, is to make like a home uh, uh, emergency generator type system uh, that uh, works off this technology. Am I correct in, this, in, in saying that? And I'm going to wait for your response, but I was getting back to the only picture of, of uh, the Model T Ford coil uh, that I could find the, it, the resolution. Yeah, that's what he said. The doing the emergency generator uh, uh, set. And as, as you know, Jason, my uh, uh, asymmetrical motor, and I have that, you know, I showed the magnets of how that works and uh, technology I've been using for a while now and uh, how I plan to make it better. But that's kind of where I started with, and uh, I actually used this motor uh, on my swimming pool pump. Uh, I figured if I could get a swimming pool pump that ran 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, about two horsepower, uh, that I could uh, uh, have a building block. And I'm using commentators on it, and I showed the commentators on it. But how the Gerard Morin configuration with the uh, water pump uh, oscillates and creates that RF uh, wave. And, you know, my hat's off to Gerard Morin. That was the first time I'd ever seen the demonstrations done off that small coil and reverse engineering how that coil was actually wound and made and the magnets and everything. And then I furthered the ringing of the bell, if you will, uh, without the magnetic field. And now I'm harnessing the asymmetrical side of that and metronomic, I call it, because uh, uh, it sounds like a metronome at slow speeds and then it, it, it's able to really wrap on up and make it so uh, it has to it. The, uh, the common thing that I was showing was I'm taking mouse traps, okay, and I was putting it up here on my old Bedini and I just laid it up there to uh, do that and gave it a spin and all of a sudden I had an oscillator there. Okay, it's in the package, but the uh, uh, how simple it is to make an oscillator to make a spark gap, spark gapping oscillator and just going into the basics of what I found from the schoolgirl motor and switching over from the bipolar transistor uh, uh, to the resonating uh, spark gap oscillator. And to me, it's opening up a whole new door of exploratory adventures, Jason. And uh, um, I was showing that. The next part that I'm really going to delve into from what I thought from the RLC circuit uh, concerning Eli the Iceman is working with the neon bulb in the circuit, okay, and working with the incandescent three watt light bulb in the circuit and delving into the diode. Okay. And the, um, uh, learning the vectors that each one of those components really have within the circuit of the, uh, Bedini. And like I said, the Bedini to me was a schoolgirl engine that motor that taught me, uh, uh, about operating with no core, uh, operating without magnetic fields, sympathetic uh, resonance off whatever coil or uh, bifolder coil that I ran, wound, and how it led me into my uh, uh, motor. And then, of course, my spinoff to make my motor be the 108 horsepower, well, 180 horsepower, but uh, the 180 horsepower motor to put into uh, airplane. And uh, the, the, the spinoffs from the batteries uh, configuration, which we will be 
in the future, I will show you exactly what I'm doing, how I'm building my batteries, how all that stuff works uh, to do that. The uh, And like I said, my batteries, I've, I've, I've got back, I've gone full circle and I'm back to activated charcoal. So we're going to start off with where I started. I think I started with the best uh, uh, medium. And then we're going to start building composites uh, of anodes and electrodes and the uh, reductive uh, electrolytes in that and the chemistry side of how that works. And just wanted to put out a short video to finish up the section on building blocks of metronomic resonance. And uh, I showed previously how I found it. And in review, Jason, how I did find it was through the wall work. And, uh, Mama called me to dinner and I unplugged it and the damn thing kept running. And when I took the wall ward apart, I found the spark gaps that were just right within the wall ward. And that's when I studied uh, how to do that. And uh, uh, which has led me full circle back to zero amp switching. Uh, 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 or zero current switching, uh, ZCS, and zero voltage switching, uh, uh, ZVS, and how it all fit into the uh, uh, zero volt switching is a very simple uh, solution to where when you're going through the uh, MOSFET, uh, the MOSFET doesn't switch. Uh, until it's at zero voltage. And so the zero voltage switching is one of the keys of really getting all the voltage uh, that's in the inductor out. And the uh, through the spark gap, I naturally found it, didn't know what it was called, and then uh, drew it up and named it, and then did research on it. And the same name I chose for it is what it turned out to be. So it's out there, been out there for a long time. But uh, zero voltage switching. Hang on just a minute. Uh, I'll get you the diagram for the zero voltage switch. Um, simple to make out of common parts. Um, there it is. Zero voltage switch. Okay. And the, I, I went back full circle and recreated it, not knowing it ever existed. So I created a wheel and then it turned out that wheel had already been created. And uh, uh, um, about this, as a matter of fact, the, the they did it better than the, the zero current switch. And so basically on the uh, different configurations of uh, other motors that people have, have built out there, they did the same thing with a rotary switch uh, uh, because they wanted to cut their voltage and amperage off and recombine them at different times. And that's how they could build up such high potentials uh, in either the series or the uh, 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 parallel circuits. And the understanding that your transmission side is a um, uh, series circuit and the difference in Y and Delta, even with your three phase and then, uh, uh, which gets us back to Eli, the Iceman. And so that's the uh, configuration of the transformers. Okay. And when you're dealing with high voltage and high frequency, Jason, the uh, uh, phenomenon that, I found it in interesting. Let's assume that the transmission line is operating at 7,200 volts. Okay. 
And let's say you're wanting to build a 25 uh, uh, kVA transformer. And that transformer is converting to 220 with the center tap neutral on it. The, my question is, is how big does the fuse need to be to protect all that off the 7200? And you'll be very surprised to learn. Of course, it's a composite fuse and designed to do a specific thing. But uh, you'll be surprised to learn that on a, a, a 25 kVA transformer, the actual fuse size there is about two amps. <laughs> so uh, very small fuse and then how that all relates going to ground and uh, that side of the circuit, the uh, on pole transformers. Okay, 100 kVA is about seven amps, just under seven amps for the fuse on that. And so when you understand the hemispheres that are vibrating back and forth like rocker arms within the uh, uh, dipole, uh, that's where the energy comes from. And that's the reason I wanted to do this series of the building blocks for. Uh, parametric oscillation and getting that bell to ring within that coil uh, and learning the frequencies and basically the building blocks that the parametric mean that the uh, Model T spark gap gives us uh, is about uh, uh, three to four kilohertz. You can go higher than that, but three to four kilohertz. And what I like about it is for control voltages, they design those points uh, with a capacitor condenser in there uh, to handle about 1.2 to 1.4 amps and start off with sympathetic uh, resonance. And then they just hijack the secondary off of that. So uh, that, that simple configuration uh, with the Model T uh, buzz box is it, it was kind of like rediscovering something that I, you know, I've worked on all kinds of engines and stuff, but I never worked on Model T. Uh, but I, thanks to Roy, I got to study that stuff. I go, well, there it is. It's all mapped out very simply, really imparting the knowledge quickly and efficiently of all the stuff that I learned in, in uh, uh, school to where you can impart that information in just a little short time. And that's uh, uh, the real purpose, even though I get long in and a lot of stuff. I like to be able to boil it down to the very simplistic uh, uh, format of really how that works. Because once I understand it is as uh, ignorant as I am, uh, once it gets into this hard, massive cell, I can impart that knowledge to others very quickly. And that's my plan is to, uh, has, well, it's been my plan in understanding these type of energies is to, take it from the complicated and make it simplistic. And that's, that's what uh, uh, Roy has uh, done with the bringing back the technology of Model T, but then it made me give me, it gave me childlike enthusiasm to start even further designing other uh, devices. And uh, um, so anyway, I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to stop this part of the discussion uh, about the part four building blocks of, of parametric oscillation uh, and how that's all formed uh, and show you something else that I'm working on. The, uh, uh, I'm, a lot of you know that I'm really involved with the American Legion. Uh, I'm at the Love Field Post uh, 453 and yeah, yeah. You, you, keeping it simple, that's what that's what we want to do. But the uh, anyway, if you're ever in the Dallas Fort Worth area, uh, the uh, want to share with you to please come out and visit us, and we'll make it home. A lot of veterans uh, uh, there. I'm a member of the Riders, and we ride motorcycles to do different uh, events. Uh, we uh, work with the honor guard for our veterans that pass away. And the, that's the, where I give back to the community in my area of what I'm doing. So I always wear this hat and, uh, out in public uh, and carry these cars because uh, I want to invite veterans to our post and uh, um, just um, uh, 
do so many things. God bless, God bless our veterans and our country. One of the people came up with a belt buckle. And are oh, you from Dallas? You're in Mur Myrtle Beach. Yeah, my sister used to live there in Myrtle Beach, and uh, 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 she lives in Ohio now. But I think she's there visiting. Uh, there have been to Myrtle Beach many times, flown there and visited with her there on the beach. And uh, yeah, that's that's cool. Uh, but anyway, the uh, I made this silicon mold of a belt buckle uh, that uh, uh, I'll be re. Uh, uh, producing and so I'm probably going to build my uh, smelter down and start reusing my old uh, technology uh, to make these riders belt buckles and so that's one of the things that I got to do uh, uh, so I'm getting tooled up to build one or 200 of these. And I'm also going to split off, you know, and showing how I actually uh, did the process, what materials I use, um, uh, working with different clays and stuff. Uh, uh, I work with fiberglass a whole lot. So a lot of the stuff that I like to build, they don't make. And that's the cool thing about fiberglass is that uh, you can take fiberglass and resins polyurethane resin and build all kinds of neat stuff. You know, you're, you're only limited by your imagination and the, uh, 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 love working on that kind of stuff. The, uh, but that's the silicon mold, but I started off with my imprint. Um, building clay molds. Okay. And you can't see that on the screen too well. Uh, maybe I can shine a light at it and you can see it better. Yeah, there you go. And upside down, of course. But the uh, that's a reverse belt buckle. Now, I can see it in my screen where it says American Legion Riders perfectly, but you're going to see it backwards. So that's the, the, uh, the neat thing. So I can see the image. Uh, forwards and backwards. Oh, these little lights, emergency lights, they have an inductor in there. So when the power goes off, that emergency light side goes off and then it has a flashlight built in to it and the high beam, low beam and flasher. Uh, you can buy these for a buck a piece. I was just fascinated uh, by that. Uh, I've got one over here in the corner. You can just barely see that uh, if the power goes off, then the, uh, big part of that works as a nightlight. Also, it, it has a photo cell in there to when it gets dark, that goes off. So uh, kind of a neat light. You can look them up for about a buck. So Jason, thank you for stopping by and thank you for all you do in your building of the uh, things that you're working on. The rediscovering this uh, technology that's been hidden in plain sight and uh, to build other useful devices with is uh, uh, kind of fun. So don't ever stop because you just keep building better light bulbs. And the, uh, um, the I've seen in my lifetime, let's go from incandescence, fluorescence, uh, through, we may go back full circle again to the incandescent light bulb. But uh, uh, there's so many things that uh, we can do to uh, keep sharing and loving it. Thank you for sharing your videos out there. And guys, uh, I was kind of late to the party in sharing videos. And not that I was trying to keep anything out there. Uh, I just never liked the camera very much. Uh, when I went someplace, I just never, never even carried a camera with me. And nowadays that we've got these wonderful cell phones and stuff. Uh, we have a camera no matter you know where we're at. And so I started video recording and also doing other things. And I go, well, that's simple enough. And the, but uh, 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 I always kind of felt like I had the memory of it up here and didn't need to go back and watch those things. But now I'm trying to get better and better at teaching, have reasons to go through and edit my own stuff and 
get better and also learning, you know, just simple. I need a tripod and uh, to start showing how I construct things. And um, then you guys that are really builders that really get down to the fine, fine, fine details of everything. Uh, you guys can take the art form and go so much further with it uh, in the open source form. So yeah, learning uh, how to make uh, uh, these things work is uh it's, it's a rediscovery and it's an adventure and it's kind of like being a pioneer, even though it's out there because uh, you, you can find different spinoffs. So the main thing is just get started, start sharing what's out there and finding who the other people are that are interested in what it is that you're doing and the spinoffs from there. I'm going to close it off. I got work to do. I got to cook steaks tonight at the American Legion. Uh, we have steaks for 15 Dollars and I call them football potatoes. I mean, they're huge potatoes. And the, I wanted to bring that back to our post because back in the day, we had a man that cooked those steaks for us. And when I was single, uh, it was so nice to have dinner on Friday night and then cut it in half and eat that half. And then the other half had it for lunch the next day. And so I wanted to bring that back because a lot of people that are at our post are shut ins. And, you know, the only activity they really get is coming to the post and talking to, each other and sharing stuff that we have and uh, ours, but we have young people there too. And, uh, uh, but the, the, I always say, you know, I, I give, so I get to give again. And the stuff that I give, I get back so many for and so many blessings that are unexpected. And I just, you know, really enjoy that. So, uh, thank everybody for sharing and, uh, uh, learning those things. Y'all have a blessed day. And like I always say, <laughs> hope you're having fun because we are.